All right, welcome to part two where we're gonna show you how we would shingle this if we were brand new to shingling, okay? So we're gonna take a couple extra precautions, things that I normally wouldn't do. We're gonna go ahead and do some extra things to make sure we get it right and eliminate mistakes, all right? So this is pretty typical for starter these days. You, uh, you gotta break them in half, okay? So go ahead and do that. Break up a good handful of them, however many you think you'll need. All right, so next thing we're gonna wanna do, is the very first thing we're gonna wanna do, is get all of our starter on before we start. Don't try to do it as you go. If you're gonna do a task and you're new to something, whatever the task is, do it all the way, all right? So if we're laying, if we're laying our drip edge, don't just lay one side and get to shingling. Lay all the drip edge. If you're laying starter, lay all the starter. So start off by measuring it seven and three quarter, okay? Now, when we make mark our line, we want this starter to overhang into the gutter. There's no gutter, but overhang our metal about three quarters of an inch. Maximum of one inch, minimum of a quarter. I typically do about three quarters of an inch and I'll go check it in the middle and some other places if the gutter apron and stuff like that is kind of wonky. All right, so we had seven and three quarters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna burn three quarters because that's what we want to hang in there. And I'm gonna mark seven and three quarters. Now how I made that mark was not with the, the blade. I just, I just marked with this thing, okay? So we're gonna go do that on the other side. Okay, now we're gonna mark our seven and three quarter. We burned our three quarter, mark seven and three quarter. And if you have any significant bubbles in your ice shield, I wouldn't call this one significant. Okay, I wouldn't call that one significant, but there's one over here I don't want. One over here, take your hook blade. This is what we shingle with, by the way, a hook blade. All right, because it's a bubble, you can actually cut it and it will fold back over itself and you shouldn't see any wood, okay? So I can go ahead and uh, shoot that with my gun or staple. We're gonna do the same thing down here. And this is gonna, this is something that we absolutely have to do. I know it seems kind of counterintuitive, but if you don't do that, you'll see, uh, you'll see that in the shingles. And I can actually show you a picture on my house where my guys didn't cut the gutter apron. So I'll be showing that right now and you can see exactly what that looks like when you don't do it. So trust me, it's much more harmful to not cut these bubbles than it would be to cut them. So I'm just going to shoot that down real fast. All right. By the way, the nails we're using are an inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter coil nails. And I recommend probably wearing a pouch uh, for shingling if this is your first time. So now we're going to snap our line. While we're at it, like I said, if you're going to do something, do all of them. We're also going to do the same thing for our edge starter. So I don't do a full three-quarter inch overhang on here. I think that looks tacky when you're actually looking up at the roof if there's a big overlapping shingle like that. So I do about a half inch, okay? Now, use your tape. Burn a half inch. Uh, burn a half inch and then make your mark. I'm just gonna do this for this sake right now All right, we're gonna do this right up here at the top as well All right, we're gonna go to the other side and mark out all of our starter because we're beginners and we want this to be right
Let's go ahead and hammer these in. By the way, like I said, you want to check in the middle. Make sure it's still going to be at least at least a quarter into that gutter because that's the minimum and it is okay so now we've just snapped all the lines for our starter so let's put it all on so like i said when you got to do something, just do it all. Spread out all of our starters. All right, starter spread out. It took less than a minute to spread it all out. Now we're not running around. Running out of stuff, okay? So, when it comes to starting, you have to be careful about this very, very important thing. I'm going to go ahead and open up a bundle to show you what that is. Let me tell you what the point of starter is. Two main things. You're going to secure this starter to the roof. These two tar lines, the one on the bottom of this shingle and the one on the top of that, will bond together and that's what's going to keep this bottom edge from lifting. That's one purpose and, I'm, and I would be willing to say that that's the least significant purpose of the starter. This is the more significant purpose in my opinion. It's to keep the water away from the roof deck and the, the ice and water shield, all right? So if I just put this up right where that's gonna go and then put this up right where that goes, you see how close these seams are. That's not okay. Water will always run in this seam right here okay even when i butt another shingle to it tight especially on a 412 not only will it get in right here it's going to work its way under all right so it's actually it's if you ever tear off a roof after a rain you're going to see water lines that are this wide around this thing okay and sometimes even more it, when it comes in and it hits this it hits this tar line it runs this way because it's that sealant will kind of dam up that water and deter it to the side all right, so I would say that you need a stagger on this that is at least around seven inches or so to start. Also, very important thing you want to note, is your starter the same length of, of your shingle? In this case it is, which is phenomenal, okay? So if I start this off and it's a seven inch stagger, it's going to stay a seven inch stagger. Sometimes some manufacturers will not have these the same length. The starter will actually be shorter okay and what that means is we can start with a seven but then the next one it's going to be it's going to be five then three and so on until these things are right on top of each other we don't have to worry about that in this case if you do have to worry about that start with your starter shorter than your shingle okay significantly shorter like that and then your your starter will work its way this way towards this back seam Rather than if you start it off this way, it gets closer to this, to this thing, okay? So, sorry if that was confusing at all, but my main point right there is, start with like a seven incher. Or an eight, okay? So, this will be my first one on the side now. Whatever. Okay, so let's just eyeball these roughly where we want them to go. Okay. Now we're going to put a shingle on right here. Leave a little bit of that line showing so that you know that you're straight. Now we need to leave no nail right here because that's where our seam's going to go. So we put a nail over here. You 
want to nail close to the bottom. And when these shingles are the same length, it makes it really easy to predict where your seam is going to be. If they're not, you're going to want to be careful where you're nailing. Because like I said, once that starter starts to work its way in on itself, you'll have a bigger issue. So what we're going to do here, we're just going to shoot that on. All right, now let's go up our rake. So what I do with this is I slide it all the way down till it's flush, okay? Now it's ready to be shot off. However many nails is fine because you're going to be putting a lot of nails in uh, through the shingle. Try not to under nail it. What I did there was I cut this off. All that's doing is exposing more top. So you can see there's still this shingle under here. Make sure they can see that. That shingle is still under there. I'm just exposing more of that tar so that the adhesion is better. All right. Now, all we do is just set this right on our line all the way up. And do not nail close to this drip edge because it'll shoot out of this little lip that's on there. Not just on the starter, but on the shingles as well. Everybody wants to nail super close, and I understand. Because you're like worried that this is gonna blow off or something. So you wanna nail super close. It's not really the case. There's not that much of a lip there. So don't over sweat that. This reaches there, perfect. Good. And that little bit that's overhanging here is actually fine because it doesn't overhang this. All right, so again, we're gonna go down flush, stay on our line. And then don't forget, go ahead and give this a little miter. and expose that tar some. Now when it comes to this, just cut it off roughly flush with the peak. It's okay if it's short, but you don't want it long. All right, so we got all of our starter on. Next, this is very important for a lot of guys. They're not going to be able to keep a roof like this straight. So you're going to want to snap some lines. This is something I don't normally do, but I'm going to show you guys how to do it. You can do this two ways. Both of them involve doing this first. This is the first step, and that is measuring your reveal. The reveal is from where I'm hooking my tape to right where this ridge is, which is where we line our shingles up. So this is the reveal part of the shingle. It's five and five eighths on most shingles. They're also about 13 and a quarter tall, most shingles. All right, but in the case that you have a different one, just make sure you measure this. This is five and five eighths for me. I'll put a thing up on the screen, like a little cheat sheet, so you guys understand. All right, every one eighth is a .125 on a calculator. So five and five eighths is gonna be 5.625. All right, so cheat sheet somewhere here or here. Now, you could just do this every uh, two rows if you want to be really particular. And I'm not going to do that. Let me show you what it would look like if you did that. I'm going to do mine every fifth row, okay? So, if you wanted to do this every two rows, 
five and five eighths twice is going to be 11 and a quarter, right? And that's what this is, about 11 and a quarter. What I would just do for simplicity's sake, I learned this from another roofer on YouTube, is just mark multiples of 11. So what you'll do is you put your first piece down, mark at the top, shoop, and then pull from there, mark 11, 22, 33, 44, do the same thing on the other end, and then every single, or every other row, you'll have a line to go to to make sure that you're keeping the roof straight. Uh, I don't think that we need that many, so I'm just gonna do it every fifth. So here's how I'm going to do the math. I'm gonna take five and five eighths, which is 5.625, and I'm gonna multiply that by five. So we get 28 and an eighth. I'm just gonna round down for math's sake to 28. So we've got 28 times two equals 56. Hit equal, oh, I don't wanna do it that way. We'll go 28 plus 28. So I'm gonna go 28, 56, 84, 112. So we're gonna put this shingle exactly where it needs to go, okay? I'm gonna mark this. Hopefully it doesn't move. And I'm gonna mark. Now we're getting ready to snap our lines. We're already there, okay? So again, if you wanna do every fifth row and your reveal is five and five eighths, you can steal my math. We're gonna go 28. So I'm gonna mark that 28 like that. Okay, now you wanna keep that tape right on that line. Then we're going to go 56. And it's easier if you got someone to hold. I'm sure most of you won't be attacking this by yourself. And then we had what, 84? Then we got 84. And then it was 112. Okay. Got to get my calculator back out. One forty and one sixty-eight. Look at that! It gives me a line right before the top too. So that's nice. Now we're gonna go do that. Same thing on the other side and snap our lines. All right, as you can see, we've got a good line there. We've got good lines all the way through here. I've used pink chalk though. I got that peachy colored one. So it's a little hard for you guys to see on camera, but it's plenty good for me in real life. So we've got this line snapped. It took us no more than five minutes absolute at maximum we snapped one two three four five six quick lines that's going to prevent us from having to double check ourselves at all during this roof so now we can go about our business without any worry about being straight we just have to lay our shingles semi straight in the meantime and every fifth row we're going to get directly right back online okay next step Start putting on some shingles, but first...